Hey, thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and additionally like this video of my official YouTube channel as well as like my other official YouTube videos through my official YouTube channel and go to my website www.susanmuling.com. So, way back when, in the year of 2014 or 2015, through my original Facebook account, I had made a request about one Medal of Honor recipient regarding my Medal of Honor art project. Not my entire Medal of Honor art project, just one. Just one individual that I was looking for. I was not seeking any further assistance. I was not asking for any further assistance regarding my Medal of Honor art project. I'm very specific when I do things because I do the best I can knowing how certain types of people are, such as my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, and ex-in-laws. And then there's the fact of having been involved with what is supposed to be considered the consenting adult lifestyle. And since I personally did not reach out to in those particular references, there is no reason, no cause, no excuse for anything involving Here at Mind Lives Books, and I watched how what I call the crazy cat people think that just because they are asked for one thing or they're given a set of tasks that that allows them when it doesn't to involve themselves with other things, and so that's why I made sure that it was for one particular aspect. Now, yes, in regards to finding a silver lining and finding the silver lining, that had to do with my daughter getting assistance and people in those capacities. That had nothing to do with me. And, I mean, yes, I authored and compiled my books, but that did not ever invite anybody to be a part of my stuff because I'm very particular. And so in certain regards as to how some people view certain things and how some people think that a female biologically on her own going and doing as I do, you know, it's one of those that's not chivalry, in my opinion. Chivalry is when a individual such as myself asks a specific, and then what is specifically asked for is done so. The respect of that, it stops at that point. It's how it's respect because you're respecting boundaries in that capacity. So, when in that reference, no, I was not interested in ever bringing my books into a different capacity, unless I specifically was asked, and I specifically was in complete control as to how each and every factor went. So because I was not personally approached or asked in the specifics of my work, there was not any option for anybody ever allowed. That is not considered anticipatory in 
in reference to going and assuming that there would ever be that want, need, or desire from me, because I'm very particular. And so, as a clarification, granted, today is the 30th of April, 2022, back in either 2014 or 2015, again, I Not anything further. I did not specifically ask, on purpose, by the way, on purpose, did not specifically ask anybody from the state of Texas. On purpose. My reason for that, as to be on purpose, not asking, is because of what I dealt with in those areas with those people in regards to the year 2000. Because of how my son and I wound up in Washington State and what we dealt with in reference to what occurred regarding my daughter, as well as everything else combined, I personally made that choice for myself because of how many situations occurred that I personally I did not want in me at all connection to those individuals. Because if, 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 if I wanted that, I would have reached out personally and asked specifically because I am that way. And again, because of how I my way. So there would have to be the discussions in person, face to face, in person, in comparison to a lecture, because a lecture is not a discussion. That's not how discussions are, because that's common sense. And so when I asked in regards of one situation, not in the overall, not in any capacity, I'm going to point out some coincidence. And how you think about it is how you think about it. So, it is known that there were certain situations regarding the state of California and certain areas along the West Coast in regards of fires in those references. And there is the knowledge of what the demographics would be as to whether or not there was a rise in the amount of fires in the West Coast region regarding that. Now, I have posted to my Instagram account, go to my website, www.lizandmewling.com, some videos as to the background from the state of Texas those darkened barks, mm -hmm. and uh, the changed leaves and stuff like that in reference to hypotheticals. It could just be symbolic. It could just be coincidence. Then there is the fact as to how situations went when I returned in 2019 because of my journal blog, The Ordering PSA, on my website, www.lizandmewing.com. Maybe some of those updates as to those clarifications and verifications. If you were to find individuals that I once knew in person, face to face in person, before those updates, as well as after certain ones, and if any one of them, any one of them, who hypothetically had anything to do with my medal. were to be involved with anything that I specifically did not ask them themselves. So when I say that, I don't mean an outward overall, such as a Facebook posting. No, 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 no. When I say 
specifically asking. That would entail me contacting them through a direct phone call or a direct message where it's not an overall sort of way, you know, kind of like the similarity regarding 2010 through 2012. No, 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 no. A one individual to one individual aspect, most specifically about my mental health art project, although also in regards of my books. Now, what I did ask, again, in reference to Finding A and Finding B Silver Lining, that is not the rest of my books. That's two books. And that does not entail the fiction book series most specifically, because that had to do with the fact aspects and only in reference to, in comparison. See, I don't like when people assume, because when people assume, then they tend to get their feelings hurt, because they assumed whatever they assumed. And then their feelings get hurt because they had whatever thought process by somebody else in comparison. I am extremely particular about my work. And so when it comes to however you view it, I did not ask, especially when it came to my Medal of Honor Art Project years. Now, in that hypothetical, if there were those who decided that they were going to do something supposedly to assist being a so-called Good Samaritan, if that were the case, if, then what is the excuse in that hypothetical regarding Iowa 2018? If that is accurate, because if that is accurate, and if in the capacities of, then what would ever be considered as a good Samaritan? What would be the difference regarding the semi-truck collision on I-35 to, in the hypothetical coincidence of Iowa 2018? The answer would be the clear view. It's that simple. So whereas in I-35 southbound semi-truck collision, I did not have a clear view of that collision at all, hypothetically, in regards to what I brought forward in the modern day book, would that constitute what I brought forward in the modern day book? In regards of Iowa, 2018. If so, if in those particular references of those metaphors, proverbially and hypothetically, then in that aspect, again, I didn't ask in those references. It is not a constitutional right for people to stalk someone or harass them or especially illegally surveil them. I brought that forward in reference to a few things. So you cannot backtrace in that reference as to certain factors because it has to do with the type of mouth. So if you already were causing needless problems in that hypothetical, you cannot backtrace that by later getting a license because it doesn't backtrace to that original time. And only irony of irony proves your guilt if you were to do so in that hypothetical. Same thing in that wishful thought of ordained reverence because it's not your freedom of religion in regards of what you were already informed of. That is called covering your ass and that doesn't do it. It actually proves your guilt in that irony because you'd have to have it before. So where some people may not have known that I've been an ordained reverend since the year of 2004, 2005, that doesn't change the fact that I've been an ordained reverend since 2004, 2005. Additionally,
Additionally, it does not change the fact that I've been a confirmed member of the Presbyterian Church, USA, through Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. See, I actually have a dual aspect in regards of because of how my confirmation class went. So in my confirmation class, the, well, technically it's a trifecta because the pastor of Old Tenet Presbyterian Church was a chaplain in the army. In the reservist, yes. At the time, though, during my confirmation class. Then, because of how he particularly ran the confirmation class, if you met certain requirements, which I had met the minimum requirements before the end of December 1996, I maxed out all of the requirements two and a half to three times to get to the level of as a permanent member in a confirmed way as to because of the type of, at that time, Presbyterian Church USA. Permanent member. Permanent confirmed member. Then there is the additional aspect of being a confirmed member and congregant. So I guess it's a quad in that percentage as to all tenant Presbyterian Church because of the work behind it. That background, that effort, that lack of half assing. So while there were other people who were confirmed, or they, I should clarify, they graduated, there is a difference between graduating and being a confirmed graduate. So it's kind of, for some to understand, it would be like, okay, you graduated whatever high school or college. Okay. Then there are those who graduated summa cum laude. Then there are those who graduate summa cum laude and are the victor valid victoria. That is the difference. So for the clarifications, by the time we were first informed, the minimum volunteer hours required. a minimum to be capable to graduate. That was just to graduate. That had nothing to do with the tests. That had nothing to do with the quizzes. That had nothing to do with the exams. Just to be allowed to graduate, you had to complete a minimum of 30 volunteer hours. By the time of December, I had 29 and a half volunteer hours. To be considered for the next level, you had to have a minimum of what would be considered a B average or a B plus for the next level. If you did not, you could graduate and you could have whatever level. But if you had a B plus, you were considered in the higher education level. Now, in regards to what would be considered summa cum laude, and valedictorian, you had to complete all that at the minimum. And then when it came to the final exam, the less amount of questions for your final exam was going to be what essentially put you in the placement category. Well, when it came to the final exam, I had one question. Because every other quiz, every other test, Every other exam had gotten perfect. I didn't believe that I could only have only one question because, you know, it's a chaplain in the army. Anybody in the military ever deal with something like that before? Okay, I didn't graduate basic training later for the army, but let's be honest on that for those listening to the lecture. But it was the truth. I only had one. That was it. I had one question for my entire final exam to be a confirmed member permanently of the Presbyterian Church USA, a confirmed member and congregant of Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, 
And then, because I had already been invited to Marina's Science and Technology School with the Navy attachment, and since that aspect went out the path, I went to the Army, I told my biological parents I was going to. Then there's the third factor. So, you know, later, sure, 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 I became an ordained reverend. Sure, later. However, all that stuff, well, before, is just extremely important. Because it's those details. I'm a little detail-oriented. Again, you can go to my website, www.susanneuling.com, and you can see what I've been working on. So I've authored and compiled a few books, which you can see through that capacity. Then there's my journal blog. I don't allow uh, certain things because I want to make sure it's my way, because it's my work, it's my journal blog, it's my experiences, it's my life, it's what I've been through, and so that's my rights. It's my constitutional rights as to freedom of expression. It's my constitutional rights of freedom of speech. It's my constitutional rights of freedom of the press, you know, when I press the keyboard. It's my freedoms. It's not anybody else's, it's mine. So, while some people might think they have an opinion, well, they do, and on their, in, in their, whatever, that's in their stuff, not in mine. Not allowed. That's my right. It's my right to pursue happiness. So in my right to pursue, pursue my own happiness, it is my constitutional rights that I can do so freely without any inhibitant. Because as long as I stay within the laws of the United States of America, and governance as to, you know, overall, you know, because of the internet capacity. As long as I remain and maintain and sustain that, there is nobody in any area, especially the United States of America, who has any legal right when it comes to my work. There is nobody who has any legal authority when it comes to my work. Because any individual who would wish otherwise would deny themselves of their own constitutional rights. Because you cannot have it both ways. So if anything during this week, regarding those wrongful shadow bans, those types of people, in my opinion, don't believe in freedom of speech. Because they cannot claim that they have the right to speak, but somebody else doesn't. It's actually the opposite. If you choose to actually fight for any type of shadow banning, you yourself are asking for that karmic response. So anybody that would do so, or be a part of that, willingly, officially, would in turn translate to where they themselves did not want it for themselves. It's a projection viewpoint. So if you take a psychological study of that, individuals who go and make it a huge issue as far as without any actual research and don't acknowledge their biases, don't acknowledge their backgrounds, or if they do, they limit it in comparison. Now I acknowledge when it comes to my fact books that, and even my journal blog, I acknowledge that in my work, because of the knowledge of the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, with my knowledge of the after effects from the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain, how I acknowledge the fact that I deal with headaches and migraines, the acknowledgement in the reference of having been diagnosed with memory deficits and cognitive disorders, I've acknowledged that. And 
And because I researched on my own, well before my journal blog updates, that there have been proven factors where there are certain emotional situations. So because of that, I, when authoring and compiling, finding A and finding B's overlay, I wanted to make sure that as much of my emotional aspects were not there. Because of what I had researched in reference to the after effects of pedantries. Because of what I researched in reference to the after effects of subarachnoid hemorrhages. Because I researched the aspects of chronic pain from headache. Because I researched what the after effects are in reference to chronic pain regarding migraines. Because I researched what a memory deficit is as to what I could find, there wasn't much, but what I could find in regards of the emotional impacts from memory deficits. Similarly, because I researched the same in that reference of cognitive disorders and those emotional impacts. So because of that, I did everything I could to not allow my emotional viewpoints, my opinions, my biases, because that has to do with that. So I broke that down and logistically took myself a step back. So that way when I presented the fact books, that it did not have my emotional aspects to ensure that no one could ever claim that I was being over emotional. I knew there would be a point when I would do updates and clarifications and verifications. However, I was not willing to do that within a certain time frame because of the knowledge. Yes, I did know the depth level that I went scuba diving to each and every time. I knew the health possibilities of each and every depth level that I went to. That is something that a responsible scuba diver takes into consideration in comparison to those who are civilian recreational types who have their emotions without ever considering to actually think about their emotions that have their biases without ever paying attention to the actualities of. And so, though I was not ever asked back in 2009 all the way through to now in 2022, there's not one person who ever in person, face-to-face, -face, in person with me ever asked me about my scuba diving, which in turn translates to one of a few responses. One, there was a lack of concern because they didn't believe whatever in those capacities. Two, they were completely immature and irresponsible in whatever capacities. Three, because of their opinions, because of what they learned in comparison to, well, known that I was medically retired. And it was known that I was invited to attend Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. Sure, it wasn't known about my grandpa Gavin. Sure, it was known about my babysitter and my babysitter's husband and where they were born and raised, which that would in turn translate the common sense factor of the ocean, obviously. and science technology school with the Navy attachment, or MAST for short. So there's the knowledge that that's in New Jersey. Well, the Coast Guard has some, some areas along the state of New Jersey. There's a few, few areas that would be considered Coast Guardish. That's kind of a thing. Um, there's also these areas along the East Coast. Kind of consider, I mean, it's called the Coast Guard. 
simple math. Mm -hmm. It's not arithmetic, it's just math, you know, or common sense. And possibly somewhere in this area called the Gulf Coast states, there could be a Coast Guard there. Hypothetically, I don't want to assume. Additionally, then, in regards to the United States of America, possibly there also could be something along the West Coast. I know it's called the Coast Guard, but I don't want to assume that just because it's called the Coast Guard that they know anything about the coast of the United States of America. <laughs> I don't want to be that type of person. just so happens to be some sort of common thread of the U.S. Coast Guard having to do something with the coast or guarding the coast of the United States of America. Well, <laughs> so I did some work in my scuba diving. Oh, you know, there's also that stuff from my childhood and, you know, my teenage years. However, you know, there was this point in time where I earned 26 scuba diving certifications and I was informed, okay, sure, yeah, there's the Oriskany that was sunken off of the coastline of South Carolina. Well, I was also informed, which those who understand certain things, you go to the root area. You don't go to the surface area, you don't go to the surf, you know, you, you don't do the superficial stuff. No, 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 no. If you want to take care of something, you go to the root source. So, I found out, sure, 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 the Vandenberg was sunken later. However, <laughs> I was born and raised in New Jersey and I took care of a few things. And so instead of going to the Oriskany, which, not that I wouldn't want to, just, you know, I was taking care of some stuff, I just went to the Vandenberg. I just went to the root source. You know, in the area beneath where the keel of the ship of the Vandenberg is, and I just went to the root source to take care of stuff. And so the, I wasn't in the Coast Guard. I acknowledge that. I was. I was born and raised in New Jersey. <laughs> However, I can make a joke. Okay. I know that there's individuals who have brought up climate change. Because there is. There's climate change, yes. And there's the acknowledgement as to glaciers having melted or whatever. There is that. However, anybody who knows about certain things regarding gardening, okay, so, for those who don't know, when you put a bulb or a rhizome in the ground, okay, <laughs> sometimes this thing occurs where the dirt raises. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you cover that bulb or rhizome with some dirt, sometimes that happens. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who knows this or not. <laughs> However, I'm fairly certain if you need another example. Okay, so I worked on my Medal of Honor, our project trip, okay? And yes, it is known that in the ground areas when you use the crane and, and the, the shovels to dig, there's a little bit of dirt that's left over. <laughs> it's a thing. It is. It is. It happens. You know, because there's this like six, seven foot by about three and a half, four feet by about three and a half, four feet. That kind of, hypothetically, you know, is a So if there were those in that civilian recreational scuba diving factor that were like, well, what did she do? And or if there were individuals in the armed forces of the United States of America, and or <laughs> Homeland Security, well, you know, by technicalities, by technicalities, um, or the Coast Guard, or the Marine Corps, or the Navy, for more specific stuff, you know, you guys didn't have to deal with that. I just didn't know how to handle things. That's it. <laughs> That's all, you know, civilian recreational. Divers. You can go, you know, swimming. That's fine. You don't have to do 
<laughs> so I went out to the area of Southern President's Beach in New Jersey in February of 2022. And I remember <clears throat> when I'd go out to the beach, you could see the jetties during high tide about half a mile to three quarters of a mile out. Now I am not going to officially say anything. I'm just going to go a little sarcastic joke. Yeah, okay. So I grew up going to Old Tenant Presbyterian Church. <laughs> this oceanic water raising situation and so you know I'm not saying <laughs> that there's any official proof regarding that particular work of mine there is no official official proof at all except the fact that the southern president's beach area yeah that that <clears throat> That coastline. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's kind of, you know, a security issue, you know, as far as, because by technicalities, I can joke, it's not a security issue anymore. <laughs> it's safe and secure. <laughs> lifestyle, how it's supposed to be considered discretion, okay? So there is this guy I once knew, Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., also known as Cactus Jack. He, when he worked at uh, Dragon's Lair, would write porn on someone's bag when he'd go out. Because the guy would ever. I disagreed with that because that's disrespectful, in my opinion. You know, it's similar to how some people think that pranks, when they're not, it's just being malicious, in my opinion. See, those types of people who think that playing a practical joke on somebody is considered funny. I don't know where that started, but I'm not that type of person. I take things seriously. So, those types of people that needlessly, hypothetically, involved themselves with my Medal of Honor art project, well, that's not covered within your constitutional rights. And I'll explain why. Because stealing valor is illegal. Now, there is the wishful thought, in my opinion, regarding the Supreme Court of the United States of America. And I can understand in reference to, because in the five branches, there is only one branch where you are not allowed to consider yourself a member of unless you graduate basic training. So I can understand where the Supreme Court would have that issue because four out of the five branches allow people to be considered a member of the branch even though they don't graduate basic training and or if they don't earn a blue identification card, those four other branches allow certain things that this one branch just doesn't allow. This one branch, additionally, if you disrespect the uniform, you are not considered a former, you are considered an ex. For those in reference to listening to this lecture, those who would have known me in person, face to face in person, you would understand from the knowledge I have an affinity for the Marine Corps for that particular reason. I dealt with, in basic training, at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, those who know in reference to 
my first day when taking care of taking a stand in reference to the female with her braids and it being her natural hair. You can pretty much envision how that went regarding drill sergeants at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, as well as other soldiers at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, because I refused to call myself that until I graduated basic training. I believed that it was so important to actually make that distinction. And so I got grief because, you know, you're not a Marine. If you wanted to be a jarhead, go and be a jarhead. That's what I dealt with. If you want to be a crayon eater, go be a crayon eater. You join the army. I understand. However, I believe it is more important. And so I took that stand and I still, 22 years later, I still have that stand. So I can understand, though I disagree respectfully, in regards of the Supreme Court ruling. Now you have San Antonio, Texas, where there's five military bases, and now it is known as Military City USA. I'm going to guesstimate in reference to finding A and finding B silver lining that there were plenty of individuals in active duty National Guard reservists and veterans, hypothetically, who found quite a few more than just one or two situations that I had dealt with, well beyond the dress blues situation additionally. So in that particular reference, you can see from the state of Texas and in of any state in the United States of America, the state of Texas, in any state, to have that number of that's a different level. Because I'm just one person. And I have those situations that I dealt with. That's just, just, just me. And I didn't graduate basic training. I also knew that there was going to be advances in regards of the female biological gender. I also knew that there was going to be the advancement in regards of the LGBTQ community. I knew this. I understood it. I could see it. So I wanted to take that stand because I saw the importance of it wasn't something that I took lightly at all whatsoever. Anybody who knows when you take a stand in reference to the armed forces of the United States of America, not one branch. No, no, not just the army. Not two branches because of the Navy. No, 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 no. Not three branches because how the Air Force came out of the Army. No, 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 no. Not four branches because of Marine, or Marine Corps, science and technology. No, 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 no. all five because of Coast Guard. I took that stand. I made that choice in the time frame. I made that choice going in to the Army branch when fighting to get into the Army branch after my biological mother and biological father and biological sister were doing as they had. I made that choice while that arguing went and occurred. When I found out that's what occurred in the Army, I made that choice. I took that Dared. Still being respectful, still doing my work where I could, aside from the fact I didn't graduate basic training. However, I took that stance. I bore that cross because there are those in a multitude of where you can obviously see in reference to how it's military city USA now. Just think, what does it take to get paperwork done? So it's one thing to do graffiti and tagging in those references. That's nothing. Not saying nothing, but in comparison to going through the legal channels, going through the different precincts, going through the mayor and the governor and however that went, 
for Military City USA, where they have signs, signs, actual signs, provided by the government in the state of Texas. Technology School, or MAST for short, with the Navy attachment. I had thought I'd be good enough to go be on the SEAL team. Whichever one, because I knew there were more than one, but I wanted to be a SEAL. To go and breach and do recon. I thought that would be awesome. Where I could drop down, which I guess I can make an irony on that. Where I could drop down, swoop in all ninja-like, just be out. And then, you know, handle business. <laughs> Start this as needed. And drop down again. <laughs> and go do that ninja stuff that Nathan will be down to do. Or do the MRAR stuff. Or MARSA. You know, that sort of stuff. That, I mean, you know, I knew about Navy SEALs. I don't know if anybody's read a book. <laughs> there are a few that were published in and before the years of the 1980s and 1990s. And I did enjoy going to the library. There might be, hypothetically, a few colleges in the state of New Jersey, possibly New York, and or Pennsylvania that have a library, a military section, kind of paying attention. <laughs> And so, you know, reading these books, and I can do that. So, you know, I've already discussed in lectures, or I should say, well, it's not a discussion, though, a lecture, uh, these Sailor Moon times, where I wanted to see Sailor Moon. It was only on at like 3.30 in the morning. Had school the next day, or that day, by technicalities. The only way was if I could ninja down the stairs in a house that was built in the 1940s without waking up my biological father or my biological mother or my biological sister. The trifecta that I can't allow them to know so that way I could get downstairs without anybody hearing to then turn the television so that way I could watch Sailor Moon where the light from the television, which was about the, the width of the, about from here to here, <laughs> or I guess from here to here, from the television screen, to not light up because it had to be angled a certain way. You needed to know geometry to be capable to do so. And then for those who know those types of televisions back then, the speakers were additionally in the back as well as the front of the television. So I had to do that to that level of ninja without waking up my biological mother or my biological father which were less than, I think it was 20 feet from where the television was to where their bedroom was. Less than 20 feet. Had to do that. Or talk about difficult. <laughs> where they didn't know at all, unless I told them. Well, I did, by official technicalities. 
in finding a silver lining in the journal blog hut. My journal blog order is the essay. That's when they learn that. I didn't tell them in person, face to face in person, though my biological sister do, because I told her. <laughs> I don't think she understood what I meant when I said I like Sailor Moon. <laughs> and so I had gotten all the, the whole series at, because, you know, it wasn't until I think it was seventh or eighth grade when Sailor Moon was on during like normal cartoon time. So while everybody else might have thought that I got into Sailor Moon in seventh or eighth grade, I was talking about that in second or third grade. <laughs> and so, you know, I had to ninja down the stairs and, well, you know what, dual training at the same time. I'll just, you know, I'll prepare myself to be <laughs> So I have to use it, and pun intended, because Sailor Moon is a TV show. And a movie. <laughs> I have a pop culture reference. I just realized that that is a pop culture reference. Sailor Moon is a pop culture reference. Yay! <laughs> it only took me this long to figure that out, and I've been into Sailor Moon for three decades? Three and a half decades? Yeah, that's how it's, that's how it's cool. <laughs> You know, only because E equals MC square. Um, I don't know when he was <laughs> into the, the space view of that sort of stuff. You know, because I don't know when SpaceX began. <laughs> I know Blue Origin regarding Jeff Bezos is within the past like five or so years. That's kind of funny. <laughs> to college out in the tri-state area, it would be so funny. It'd be hilarious. If by just by happenstance, just serendipitous. <laughs> I don't know if they remember it. I don't know, I guess it would depend. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Usually I was either at the library or at a party, one or the other. It really wasn't much of a difference. <laughs> Sometimes it's well, you know. Depending on the time frame when you were in the library and who was in which section, because, you know, if you knew that, that's a whole other, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> don't think that librarians, and don't think they're as square as you think they are. <laughs> they're, they're not necessarily as square as you might think, so... <laughs> I guess I'm a really good example of that. <laughs> Nonetheless, that, that, that's how that was. Yeah, it's just, just back then, you know. And so, <laughs> be so funny, <laughs> especially as much time as I spent in the, the different libraries at um, the colleges, because Though there are the times when my quiz would over as far as time, and then, you know, oh, well, what, what's going on? Dance party! <laughs> Although, I don't know if that was really considered dancing. <laughs> Some of that stuff that I was seeing as a child, but I don't know if that's really considered dancing for some other occasions. I've seen stuff that I saw <laughs> when in this hypothetical, okay, in this hypothetical, <clears throat> so they were usually at night, so there's an irony regarding that, and so I'm not going to, so I don't think, you know what, I realize that's probably that dancing. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that at that, you know, some of those locations and, you know, a row area, 
you know, with those Greek letters. <laughs> I really wasn't dancing now that I think about it. It just took me to figure that out. 2022, just as long as I had volunteered at it. Sapphire, most specifically. Huh. Well, you know. <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, if you know, in some of the locations where they had two and three floors, you know, if you were to, for those who know Sapphire, if you were to take the back area and put it on the second floor or third floor, well, I guess, you know, that might have been my cognitive issue <laughs> regarding that. Because. Well, there you go. <laughs> I, I think that's not it. I think that's a cognitive disorder part right there. I think that's what that is. I think so. I'm fairly certain that would be considered, a, you know why? Because instead of two or three floors, it was a one floor. So. That would be hilarious. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so, you know, time and stuff like that. <laughs> I've grown up since then. You know, taller. <laughs> I'm not saying. This would make sense in regards to certain situations. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to leave that there and just be like, you know what? I, I think I... Where, where did you go to college? <laughs> Which is funny because then there's Austin. And all of these Austinites that try to impress me. <laughs> They're like, we're going to be so whatever. And it's like... So internal thoughts in those time frames. Aww, you think that that's a new type of a party? Aww, aww, I don't you. And so all of these Austinites were like, whatever the Dory Bell or whatever Susan, and it's like, aww. <laughs> you think that's a new type of a party? Well, aren't you cute? <laughs> oh, you think you're being rebellious? Aww. <laughs> Let me guess, you're mad at your mommy and daddy for not paying something for you. Aww. And so you're going to go to a party and be like, I'm going to go have fun. <laughs> and then, you know, there are those who know how those are. No, yeah, I've seen that before, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, that's nothing new. I've already seen that. No, 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 no. And so then I had a bunch, especially in the Austin community, that were like, if you actually weren't so boring, Lady Dory Bell. No, 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 do tell. Do tell. What makes you think I'm boring? <laughs> I, I think I'm boring. However, what makes you think I'm boring? God has, God has, God has. Let me know. Let me know which, what it is that, that makes you think I'm boring. And so, oh, you don't go in, you know, randomly with a, oh, yes, because I care about my health. Okay, if that's what makes you think I'm boring, go ahead. Next. <laughs> oh, because I won't randomly jump from relationship to relationship to relationship without any foresight or thought or concern or, okay, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, how dare I think about that? Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, next. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Among the few other situations, oh, okay, you think you're, oh, you think you're snarky. Aw. Have you met any college students from New Jersey? <laughs> you you want to see snarky. <laughs> Mm 
No, 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 no. You want to see snarky? Go take some people from Princeton and Rutgers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 While they're going to college, fast forward about 10, 20 years, and I'll show you snarky. <laughs> no, 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 no. You think this is new? she was getting a divorce from Paul, which is an irony because Grandpa Nichols had the five T situation. But anyway, so, and she knew me and Philip, which is an irony of irony. So there's three Ps and then there's my biological sister, Patricia. And then, you know, then there's Patrick. And so, hey, five Ps, Grandpa Nichols would know I'm military guy. As far as that piss poor planning prevents Problems. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, <laughs> no, piss poor planning, performance, something. There are those who know what it is. And so, yeah, well, that's an irony, especially. So, the irony in reference to my having spoken with Peta's father and mother about her and working and stuff like that and those capacities. Not in reference to me. No, no, in something else, because why would I ever allow that? You see, that requires informed aspects, not any other way. Yeah, no, I was not ever informed in that hypothetical of those needless problems, because that's what would be considered as needless problems, because I was not ever informed. So if you don't inform fully, so if you withhold information, you are lying. That is not considered within any moral or ethic as anything that would be considered acceptable in any capacity. Any attorney would rip that apart easily because you have to officially inform by official standards if you choose not to withholding is considered lying. It's under intent. And so if your intent in that regard, you don't have permission to at all whatsoever. So I didn't ever give permission for that because I'm specific. Because when it comes to the, what is supposed to be considered the consenting adult lifestyle, well, if you don't have the full information, then you don't have consent. No matter what, this is why I was honest, and still am, regarding the after effects of my head injury. So anybody that would ever try that legally didn't have my consent to begin with. Because of how I am. It's mandatory in reference to that. And so additionally, in regards of my Medal of Honor art project trip, which also to the after time frame of my scuba diving, I would not ever allow that ever. No, 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 no. No, if I wouldn't allow the civilian recreational scuba divers that I knew in certain regards, there is no one in the supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle that I would ever allow in those capacities when I was involved. There's not one person I would ever allow that in any capacity. Not if I was actually informed, and since I wasn't ever informed, that nullifies any wishful thought in those regards. Fully nullifies and actually is an allowance in regards to a reversing. Additionally, there is that freedom of expression does not constitute going and shadow banning because that's not freedom of expression. That is considered bullying online because freedom of expression is where 
everybody has freedom of expression. What you choose to say, if you choose to do it without etiquette and without respect, that's what your choice is. However, you don't have the right to prevent somebody else from expressing themselves. That's called infringing. You don't have the right to infringe upon someone else's constitutional rights. The only thing you are allowed to do is elevate constitutional rights. If you do anything in that way to try in those capacities, you yourself are asking that for yourself. So in reference to, in that hypothetical of, whether in reference to my website and or my social media and or my books and or my Medal of Honor art project work and or anything else that I have worked on, officially, what would that mean or translate to as far as the justice? Well, flip and reverse. Every situation that I needlessly dealt with is to them and theirs in whatever capacity of, because I didn't consent to any of that. I wouldn't ever allow my son and my daughter and I to go through that, ever, in any way, shape, or form. Because if there were people who wished that I would allow certain things, no, I wouldn't. Obviously. So because I wouldn't allow that, there is no legal standing to ever have been involved. I didn't ever allow anybody to have any involvement, which would then in turn translate because I did not allow that. There is no reason, there is no cause, there is no excuse for any of those problems. I am so glad that E equals MC square has hopefully fully removed every type of, although maybe in the justice aspect, those who in that capacity of that hypothetical should have that turn to them. But, you know, it depends. Because do you look in the reference of forgiveness, but if there is no remorse in that hypothetical, if those individuals do in this hypothetical, if there is no remorse and if there are the individuals who still want to complain, despite however many clarifications and verifications, then what is the remedy to that legally? Well, that would translate to either one of two things, their actual remorse and then them paying fines and whatever um, compensation in every capacity of, where can be, and or the aspect of where what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Because there's realistically, in reference to social media, there's only very few recourses in that reference. So if in that hypothetical, those particular situations where there was not any consent by me, because obviously I wouldn't consent to that ever, whatsoever. My son and my daughter and I are more important than those people's wishes in every capacity. Those types of people that wish to be involved with stuff that's not for them to be involved with. I don't care about other people's opinions. I don't do opinion polls because I don't care about other people's opinions. That's kind of the thing. So that negates any wish on those references. It doesn't matter to me doesn't mean anything to me. Other people's opinions are exactly that. Their opinions, that's for them to deal with. I wouldn't ever be a part of that willingly with the knowledge of. There is not anything that would ever be considered acceptable, especially in the reference of what I already was dealing with. I don't care as far as other people's wishes or thoughts or anything like that. Because first and foremost, she wasn't even born and raised, if I'm not mistaken, in the United States of America. So there's that legal aspect of. 
So she, if I remember correctly, she just moved here. Okay, good for you that you immigrated here. Cool. That doesn't give you any rights in reference to constitutional rights of the United States of America. There is no reason for any other country in regards of, in my opinion, to ever have anything to do with the armed forces of the United States of America, active duty National Guard Reserves, veteran or dependent, unless by informed knowledge thereof, by free will choice. And the only way there's a free will choice is if there is the full information of. In full truth, without anything held back. If not, then that's a violation of, if I'm not mistaken, that's a violation of the Geneva Convention, that's a violation of NATO, and that's a violation of the UN. By their aspect of. If I understand the little knowledge that I have as far as those types of involvement. In addition, then there's my son and my daughter, and those people would be involved with endangerment of two minors, because that would be from the time frame my son and my daughter were in elementary school. Automatically, each and every one of those individuals that would know about that, be a part of that without any consent of mine, there's no one else to go through, to that level, officially, those people, by the legal definition, would be held in contempt because of those people's choices as far as endangerment of two minors, as well as the violations in regards of the Americans with Disabilities Act. There's no way around it. Legally, if I'm accurate, that would be that in regards of my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, their connections, my ex-in-laws, their connections, and in addition, any of those individuals in scuba diving, the San Antonio pagan community, the supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle community throughout the state of Texas, there is no one. Every one of them would be considered invalid in every capacity for each and every factor because of those facts. My son and my daughter were born in the year of 2001 and 2002. Automatically, each and every person, that would include even the house that I had in San Antonio. That would include all of my neighbors, if in that hypothetical of, because they did not have the legal authority, nor the legal rights. Doesn't matter. So whether in regards of the homeowners association or what have you on that, legally, they did not have the right. I, as far as the state of Texas, my son and my daughter were minors. So it doesn't matter what any of their wishes are, automatically endangerment of a minor for my son, as well as my daughter, each and every time, each and every charge. Compiled. In that addition, regards of the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, then you have that legal addition as far as that's concerned. Each and every time, because of the consent required, I didn't ever give consent. My dead ex-husband didn't have the right to either. He didn't have that legal authority. I'm the sponsor. So then there's that additional factor. He didn't ever become a sponsor for me. Officially, that wasn't ever a situation where he was ever allowed that. So I've always been the sponsor, so then in addition to that, that would aggregate and elevate each and every individual in those capacities of. There's not any leeway. There's no room for any of that. That's 22 years at this point in time regarding my ex-in-laws. That's 22 years at this point in time regarding my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister. That's 22 years for either side's connections. And then each individual thereof thereafter, however many years, automatically. There's no excuse, there's no cause, there's no reason. Because especially when it's in the hypothetical, you have the proof, though, in regards of my ex-in-laws, automatically it's before 9-11.
because of the year 2000, automatically. So each and every connection thereof automatically, those people would automatically have incriminated themselves of their own free will, additionally, because of their online stuff, automatically. There's no umbrella of protection for any of those people whatsoever. And any individual, whether I dated them or was involved with them in any capacity, would automatically be within those factors of if they knew and were not truthful with me. Because then that goes to another level. Because then that does go into a different situation, which I did bring up in reference to the modern day book. Automatically. If any of those individuals have children, what would they be okay with, with their own? Whether it's a son or a daughter. Because if they would be okay with that, whether a son or a daughter to their children, well then, that lets you know what type of parent that would be. Or lack thereof. Because I wouldn't ever allow that. But that's known as well. So then, in addition to all of that, I didn't ever invite anybody. In regards of my Medal of Honor art project trips, in the official capacity, because even though I asked, I specifically said the requirement is that you discuss with me the details before. Nobody else. It's similar to scuba diving. There's nobody else to speak with about my scuba diving at all. You can go and verify certain things, but when it comes to what I took care of in the water, that's it. You got nobody else. So those types of ignorant individuals with any lack of common sense, lack of intelligence, lack of humanity, lack of any worth, in my opinion, because realistically I don't see any worth to any of those individuals, in my personal opinion. Because... That's my son, my daughter, and I as our family. I don't see any worth to those people. At all. Literally or figuratively. In my opinion. You can prove me wrong, of course. Uh, but do so with etiquette and respect. Because there is the fact that I did not invite those people. So, in regards of the metaphor of the 6th of January to the state of Washington and or in the state of Oregon because of the velvet rope. Um, then there's those factors in regards of those people and those situations. Same thing in regards of that apartment complex, so on and so forth. Those needless types, as far as those types of temper tantrums, those problems have been a plague to people for quite a long amount of time. So yes, I've already gone over the people who lived in the apartment beneath mine, but then there's the situation in regards to the Halloween event in 2013. I've gone over those factors, the issues in reference to that photographer who didn't do the job. If I am not the only person who did not get the pictures that were paid for, well then, that's the facts. So I reached out. There is no excuse for that sort of temper tantrum. Because my son, still a minor, at that time. In addition, if it was known what I already was dealing with, then there's those needless problems of those types. And then there's that passive aggressive type. And, you know, 
I mean, don't make me regret having taken care of my work and scuba diving. Don't make me regret that. That'd be a bad idea. I mean, I don't want to regret my work because just think, there's so many uh, situations that I took care of. Don't make me regret that work. I mean, sure, I'll always be capable to speak the truth on that. Uh, just don't make me regret my work because you're that type of a whatever that would be considered as. Because you wouldn't ever be considered important to me if you decided to involve yourself with my stuff. Especially after what I already dealt with. As far as that type of a photographer, you're not that. If you're nobody, you have my friends. And sure, maybe you could have known about certain whatever is regarding my modeling. It doesn't change that fact. Um, I was dealing with stuff. And so those types, well, you should know the privacy laws in your area. And I have full-fledged declared before my transfer that I didn't give permission. That doesn't change at all. Just saying. That's not someone I would ever consider as a fan, by the way. Someone that wouldn't respect my privacy, I wouldn't ever consider as a fan of mine. No, 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 no. Not the type of person I am. No. No, if you were to be a fan of my work, well, then you would have etiquette and respect. Don't ever make the mistake in those references. Otherwise, because I don't know what other people think in those regards. Um, however, the way I view things, it, it's a bit New Jersey in those regards. That's a, that's a bit New Jersey. I'll acknowledge that. Because when it comes to if in the consideration of that fan aspect, well, then you would follow etiquette and protocol standards. And if you wouldn't know what they would be, you would have common sense to ask me. Because if you didn't, and then I flat out explain and clarify, such as the modern day book, as well as my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, automatically you've been put on notice. So I wouldn't ever view that where that would be in that capacity. I wouldn't ever see that as somebody considering in appreciation of my work, ever. I don't know why anybody would, especially after my clarifications and verification. While some might think that illegal aspect of, I mean, just here, think about it this way. Let me clarify this. You know I'm traveling across state lines. Think about your mom or your sister or your daughter, okay? Your female friend, whatever. She's traveling across state lines and everybody that's around her doesn't tell her the truth. They pop up out of nowhere without any permission they haven't been invited. They're not distinguishing if they're friendly, though they go and act a certain way, which each would know as far as whatever verification of. And as that female crosses different state lines, all of these different situations occur. And then, when that female has the right to get upset, you know the responses. All you have to do is have common sense. 
So just in, in reference to the modern day book, if you have the capability of being honest, put yourself in that position if you're a female. Instead of any biases or viewpoints, put yourself in my position. Know those details and think about how you would respond in those regards. How you would make those decisions. Do you think you would be as clear and calm or would you throw a fit? If you are a male, think about the facts as to what choices were made. Because if you want to do that to another male, and you would actually ask with etiquette and respect, instead of forcing yourself without permission, without having been asked, what would the response be? Because if my response is still tempered compared to what the response would be either way, then whose problem is that regarding the reality of? Because those people not liking, they're called those people, is not my problem. That's those people's problem. Because why would you think that would ever be considered acceptable? Is it that millennial viewpoint? In comparison. Because why would you think, in regards of my scuba diving, what would make you think to go speak with my son and or my daughter in comparison to me? What lack of intelligence would you actually have to have? And what is your pattern of behavior? What is your proof as far as situations have occurred? Because my son and my daughter, being minors at that time, in elementary school, I believe that's considered pedophilia. If there's any connection, especially because if I ever dated you and you involved yourself without my permission, automatically, that's called premeditation, I believe is the legal term. Then there's the aspects in reference to why would you ask anybody other than me? Why would you be so weak within yourself to not have the etiquette and respect to just ask me? Because what would there be to respect in regards to those types of individuals that would ever think it would be better to speak with everybody except for the one person who did it? Unless you're that much of worshippers of death in comparison, which then why would you ever appreciate life? Because that would be proof. Nobody who would appreciate life would ever, at any point in time, waste a second. And now it's going on 13 years. This sort of stalking and harassment, that doesn't prove anything to me at all, except the same thing that I've already brought forward. I wouldn't ever view that as appreciation for my work. Because why would that ever be considered as appreciation? Anybody with common sense would know better. So I can appreciate in regards to the removal of shadow banning, which realistically is nothing more than someone being a bully. That's all that is. So that sort of stuff should be automatically brought forward. Because it's, it's not even a bully in a old school way. It's a behind a keyboard, like one of those, you know, those types that wouldn't ever actually have the internal capability to actually speak with. Like someone who was born and raised in New Jersey, um, in the 1980s and 
1990s? You want to talk about, like, ew. Just ew. Just, that would be just, I don't know how anyone would ever think that there would be anything to respect to that time at all. And then the longer amount of time, ugh. That was like, ew, just ew. They're just ew. <laughs> I mean, they're just, realistically, it wouldn't be any, like, I mean, talk about oxygen thieves. Ew. Just ew. So gross. I mean, just, ugh. If you would ever think that would be considered as anything, just ew. Actual words beyond ill. There's, there's just nothing that would ever be considered respectable as far as that's concerned. I mean, 1980s, 1990s New Jersey. Growing up, walking around the fire boroughs. Ew. Ew. That's someone who's so weak that they know for a fact that they couldn't ever actually be capable to actually speak. Like, that's the type of person that, like, if they were to be in front of me, like, I, I, okay, so I'm going to go, and so, so, like, they'd be the type of person that would think that they were hard. But, like, okay, so those, those who understand where I was born and raised, okay, so that would be, like, someone who would think in that millennial way, which then there's that, that like just standing there and being like, <laughs> would actually be something to respect. I mean like, that would be like the, that would be, oh, well let me get my heel to actually crush you because that would be just, that would be the most passive aggressive, weak, Lack of anything that would be of any importance, worth, or value. I wouldn't ever, I would be so embarrassed for that type of a person. That would be the most embarrassing try to actually do anything. To like, I know how people are from New Jersey. That would be like the most, the, the hugest embarrassment for that type of a person and those people. That would be like the least creative, um, the just ew, ew, to ever think that you could ever be at that level, ew, you better not be near any water. <laughs> because ew, you want to talk about the other factors, ugh, ew, just, what was it, there was this, okay, so I was engaged to a guy, and he had this friend who had this girl that he was dating, and, and, and I, I, I did what I could to be kind. I did everything I could to be kind. I tried so hard, and so, um, ew, it was just ew, okay, so Sean McCall knows who that would be, and so this girl, you know, she was as she was, she had a problem because I wouldn't just stand there and do nothing, and so, and so we went to a dance club, and anybody who knows a New Jersey girl, as far as, you know, I'm a New Jersey female, but when it comes to a club, and the beats going, mm -mm, mm, born raised in New Jersey, grew up going to five boroughs, I could hear a beat a few months, of, well, I should say a few blocks down, because mm, there, are no, there are those who know, especially when it comes to grandma and grandpa's neighborhood, mm -hmm. because we would do parties up in the daytime, 
It wasn't just that night, Ty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Spitting battle didn't just happen at night. I don't know who knows what as far as the 1980s and 1990s. Mm-hmm. You didn't just go dancing at night. Mm -mm, it could be broad daylight out and somebody bring out the boom box and everybody start partying. Mm -mm, mm -mm, somebody bring out the turntable to just be like, be here at whatever. No paper. No paper. You just in the area and you know what? We're down the block about whatever, near whatever or whatever. There's going to be a spin-off and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. No. No. That's, that's old school. Uh-uh. 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 So some female, girl, wishful, whatever. Guys who would know. Guys who would know where I was born and raised. Mm-hmm. 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 It's like up in Sapphire. Some freaking male and female. All right, this was fantastic because I was in the office area. So I hope that camera in the office area that belonged to Sapphire, not me, I hope that that camera caught those two people. So this male and female, two brunettes, girl has this curly hair, whatever, and I'm standing there talking with Michelle and everything like that. And the male walks up to the counter and he's like, so uh, where'd you learn how to dance? And it's like, what is this? In my thoughts, what is this? And so that the female, whatever girl, she's all like, yeah, whatever. And so one of the two, oh, well, the male said, well, she's from New Jersey. Oh, what exit? Because I picked up on the energy. What exit? You friends with Jason? Aw, aren't you so sad? Aren't you so weak? Let's play. Let's go, little boy. And so the little, the male had said, oh, uh, I don't know. And so the girl said, oh, exit 193. Oh, I'm going to go check that because I didn't grow up driving. Yeah, yeah, I got my driver's license in Illinois. I got my driver's permit in Illinois too. So uh, anybody with common sense would know, I don't know what backwoods area that boy be from as far as that's concerned. So that little boy, as far as whatever, um, you know, I checked the, lo the longest road in, or highway is 98 miles or something like that. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only person I ever met who had ever asked what exit I was so calm. Mm -hmm. I was so calm because there was a discussion I had more recently. And that discussion, the way that went, is how I actually wanted to have that discussion in regards to that boy. But I was so calm. Mm -hmm. I was so calm. I was because yeah, I was calm. Mm -hmm. Because I dealt with that before. But anyway, that little boy. He had actually challenged me to a dance-off with his little girl. And it was one of those, no, no, I'm better than you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not interested. First and foremost, because, ew. Um, if you want to do a competition, go on a competition night. Uh, second, if you want a dance competition, you need to speak with my biological sister, not me. I don't do dance competitions because that's not something I'm interested in. Yeah, no, when I would hang out with my friends, we just danced. Yeah, yeah, so if you want to do a dance competition, you go find those types. That's not my type. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't do that. Yeah, 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 that's just not of an interest to me. So if you want to do that, you, you either go on a night where there's an actual dance competition, or you go somewhere else where there's a dance competition instead. But I'm not that type. And I don't accept challenges because I have that pattern of behavior. If I challenge, it's because I challenge myself in comparison to those types that want to feel better about themselves because they think that that's something to be proud of in comparison to not. Yeah, 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 yeah.
it's a personal thing. I mean, depending on who you are, it's just it's a reality. I'm not that type who willingly gets into that. So Sapphire had the Miss Sapphire competition, and two years in a row, they were like, oh, Susan, you should, nope, mm -mm, not my type. I will support and assist where I can in other capacities. That's just not something I'm comfortable in. It's just not. I'm not the type who does that. If you knew me before my head injury, I would only enter in certain competitions, and that was it. I wasn't the way my biological sister is. Not at all. I wouldn't just enter competitions just because. So that's not something I do. That's not something I'm interested in. I will assist where I can, and, and I did. There's, you know, there's a few females I gave a few pointers to. There's a few, there's one female I assisted getting her corset squared away. That was it. But that's not something I personally am interested in because I'm just not that type of person. I don't really like competition. Not when it comes to other situations because, you know, after, for those who understand, um, and it really is a military thing, once you caught the rabbit, no other competition matters. So, I earned 26 scuba diving certifications in, a, in less than a year, and I landed at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico several days and several scuba dives in a row, and then I landed at the bottom of the ocean out in the Atlantic at the Vandenberg area in the abyss. So once you catch the rabbit in that proverbial way, there's no competition that ever means anything. And that's not fair, in my opinion, to people who actually want to be a part of that in comparison. Because that's what they prefer, and that's fine. I can be a supportive individual, but once you catch a rabbit in that way, there's nothing of importance that comes anywhere close at all, in any capacity. There's nothing of any value to it to someone in that way. So I would guesstimate, so there's cutie patootie Navy SEAL, or uh, Rob O'Neill, and he's known, along with that particular team in the combined factors, in reference to Osama bin Laden. And so I would guesstimate, not just Rob O'Neill or Cutie Patootie Navy Seal, um, and those guys, especially because of, there's kind of that, uh, and it's obviously not the same. I didn't graduate basic training, I didn't go and do whatever, whatever. There is that, I would, I would guesstimate those guys in those specific types, they would understand in that reference where it's like, yeah, I caught the rabbit. And, and that's a metaphor for those, so I, at Freehold Raceway Mall, the greyhounds would actually go after a rabbit, not, not necessarily there, but there are the, there were a few greyhound races, but there's also other greyhound races and they actually use a rabbit. And once a greyhound catches the actual rabbit, they don't ever care about competition the same way. They don't actually know about competition, but they just don't care. They become a, they just become docile. They'll play and have fun, but they, they, you know, they, they are protective dogs. They are extremely protective. But other than that, they don't run afterwards. Once they catch the rabbit, they're done. Not in regards of done being themselves, they're just done in regards to that sort of a race. They don't have any need. There's no internal anything for that. So other dogs who, or people who know about this, so other dogs that meet a greyhound that has caught the rabbit, they know they can just hang out and play. They don't do anything, other, even in the competition circuit, I'm sure that there are those who know this, those greyhounds in the competition circuit, 
If they meet a greyhound that caught the rabbit, they just play. The irony is the greyhound that caught the rabbit, the other greyhound will actually bow before the greyhound who caught the rabbit, before they go to play. And I don't mean where they go like this, no, I mean they actually physically bow. They will take their front paws, put them down, and their head will go down before the greyhound that caught the rabbit. And then the greyhound that caught the rabbit, the, it usually makes a noise. And then the other greyhound, especially in regard to the competition group, then they go, and oh, whatever. There's not ever any greyhound that caught the rabbit, or a, another greyhound that was in the competition aspect, ever went and tried to race a, a greyhound that caught the rabbit. It's an internal knowledge of those particular, for that particular. So, you know, I mean, uh, if I remember a, a, a Joe Rogan Experience podcast, if I'm not mistaken, he had been interviewing someone, I can't remember who, on the uh, YouTube channel, and he had said something about, you know, certain animals have certain, uh, I can't remember who he was talking with, but there, it was, I'm paraphrasing, it was something along the lines of certain animals, you know, in the animal kingdom, sometimes you wonder if they're smarter than human beings. Well, in this capacity, if it was known in regards of weather and reference, okay, well, I only got second and third place in sparring and form in the international circuit. However, I was the youngest individual to do so, and I was only in green belt. And on top of that, the lowest ranking belt that I went against in the international competition, not in the local in the local different areas of in that circuit, there wasn't anyone below a red belt with a black stripe that I went against in order to be capable to place. So for those who don't know Taekwondo, there's red belt with a black stripe and then black belt, whatever degree. So that's the local area back in eighth grade. So then, in reference to the international, okay, yeah, in the international circuit, from people from other countries, it was a brown belt with a black stripe and tape and above, which means brown belt with a black stripe and tape, the different degree levels before your promotion, then red and that tape, and then red with a black stripe and then tape, and then black belt. So the international, circuit is the equivalent for a brown belt with a black stripe, the equivalent in the United States of America for that circuit at the time of a minimum of a third or fourth degree black belt in the United States of America. While I was a green belt, and I didn't even graduate middle school yet. So for those who understand that, um, you know, that's kind of another version of catching the rabbit really early, you know, so, well, yeah, it's, it's, eh, as far as, you know, okay, I got second and third place, although it, it was in the international, so it's the equivalent of not the Olympics, because if, I mean, unless there's, I guess, I don't know if that's considered the Olympics of Taekwondo, because of it being all of the countries in that particular reference back when I was in eighth grade. Um, but yeah, so back in eighth grade, second and third place in sparring and form. So sparring, second place. Form, third place for the international circuit. Um, and, and it was the international in, individual that I had been in that competition with in comparison because we did circuit level. So I already had done the state of New Jersey, the tri-state area, the East Coast, the uh, third section, so there's the East Coast, the Midwest, and the West Coast. And then after that, I forget, and there's some in the intermittent sort of whatever, and, and then there was the international portion. So 
there was about, if I remember, it was something like seven to ten different competitions where you had to place in both categories first, second, or third to be allowed. And each and every competition, you had to place in either first, second, or third in both sparring and form to be allowed to progress to the next area. This is why I made attempts to explain to Crystal Lake staff, as far as the cheerleading squad, that they had their opinions and their feelings. And so um, that was as it was. And so by the time of the international competition, I was representing the United States of America and the state of New Jersey at the exact same time as well as the tri-state area and the east coast area and the northern hemisphere, I can't remember, I think it was the northern hemisphere of the United States, but like they broke it down in a multitude of ways. So uh, I represented, of course, the um, dojo that I had attended. Uh, I represented Fente Ball as far as him that reference and then um, and, and then yeah so when you catch a rabbit at that point um, it's kind of really difficult for someone in that capacity to really go in and be interested in that carrot sort of way as far as you know those who put like a carrot in front of a horse that's one of those eh, well you know you already caught the rabbit yeah, you're going to kind of have to actually get my interest in that regard, and it's not the other way around in <laughs> that reference. So yeah, back in, and I wasn't even 13 years old yet, I was 12 years old. So, um, <laughs> there's, there's that, additionally, and then that same year was the invitation to the Marine and Science Technology School. Uh, with the Navy attachment, so maybe that makes more sense in regards to, oh, I could be uh, that, too, and I'd already been going out to the Atlantic or the Ocean, and that, and so that's before I was 17 years old and in the Army, um, and so that's why, I t you know, I mean, in some ways you can take however you view that regarding my stance. I understand it being an issue because especially if in the Pentagon, um, you know, you have four of the five branches and only one is in that capacity, such as the Marine Corps. Um, that's kind of a different situation when it comes to that problem of stolen valor. I could easily see where the U.S. Supreme Court would have an issue with that because there's only one branch and it's kind of outnumbered in reference to the five other branches because of however they handle that. So, um, so I took my stand and I still stick, I still stay by that. Um, and I had done what I could where I could in genuinity and truth, and so however that's viewed in that capacity. Um, but that's, and, and that was even before going to basic training. So the recruiter stations, I dealt with that. Like, th so the Marines that were in the recruiter station with the Army and the Navy, the Marine guys, really, <laughs> they had, so, okay, I'll acknowledge the Marine guy. Um, there was a, he was an older male. Um, he had a, he had a bunch of lines, like there were like five, I think there were five lines right here. For those who know, the little red lines, I don't know what they mean. And then there was like some gold around them. I can't remember what that's called. I know what he told me. And then, um, so those who know the Marine Corps ranks and stuff like in comparison to me, uh, and then he had, I think there was two of the rockets, and then 
then whatever as far as oh wait no chevrons and then the whatever however many rockets or whatever i think there was a star maybe i don't remember so for those who know the marine corps stuff <laughs> again in my defense i was 17 years old and this was before my head injury on palm sunday in 2000 and so the navy who was in the the same area as well as the army recruiters and the marine corps we were all talking as far as those recruiters and i and you know i had we were all in the smoking section nobody should be surprised at that whatsoever especially in the state of texas and so um i had written about this and after having discussed this regarding um, finding a silver lining. So if you go to my website, www.susanmuley.com, you can go look at my books, and there's that through Amazon. Um, and so these guys, we had discussed that there's the, um, you earn being in the, the title of a Marine. You know, yes, it's considered propaganda, but it's more than just propaganda because it is a it, it it is considered propaganda because it's considered almost a commercial, but it's not. There's more behind it than just that when you look at the longer term, especially when you consider that. So the few, the proud, the marines. Well, yeah. When you think about how many people actually go off to basic training, and when you really take in consideration in reference to the Pentagon aspect of all five branches, not just in reference to the Marines, but the Army, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, the Marine Corps, and the Navy, and as many people, I mean, myself included, I didn't graduate basic training, but when you take in consideration how many people wash out, okay, fine, I earned my blue ID card, for other aspects as far as from what I was explained in, in those references. However, that is the truth when you take in consideration ending all types of stolen valor. The few in all five branches, the proud because they were capable to actually graduate basic training and earn that in comparison, because you actually earn that title. It's not something that in certain other references, and you wonder why in regards to the state of Texas, with all those different situations, especially with as many reenacting um, stuff that you have. And so I could see that in my personal viewpoint, regarding that, but that's something in BCMJ standards to take in consideration as well as the U.S. Supreme Court, because that's something that would have to officially change within the structure of each branch. All the, the four other branches would have to agree to that to be capable to then bring that forward to the Supreme Court. Because the only way that the, if, if from the very teeny tiny, I can't even call it minimal, okay, to be honest, though from the very teeny tiny amount of information that I have read and or seen or heard in regards of, whereas in law enforcement, I would guesstimate, you know, the illegal aspect of impersonating an officer that probably has to do with a similar factor in reference to the way the Marines are. And so if in that capacity, because impersonating an officer uh, is illegal because you have to graduate whatever you have to graduate, you have to go through whatever additional training. And so there's all these, these this combination of stuff in comparison to the way four out of five branches of the Pentagon um, it isn't outnumbered as an irony regarding the TV show, uh, but there was that situation back in Illinois where it was three guys from the Army, uh, two or three guys from the Navy. There was a 
guy from the Air Force who had stopped by one or two as far as recruiting stations, and then um, the Marine. And it was only that one guy. I mean, I think there was one guy who was in the office, but we were outside. And I said, well, that's a simple fix when it came to the, the sign-on bonus discussion that I had discussed in person, face-to-face in person with people who were so in the state of Texas, but also had wrote about. And so um, I said, well, I'll just take a stand on that. You know, I, I don't, it's not that I don't not see the purpose to that. I do see the purpose because I've spoken with all of the branches. Um, however, you know, because I was looking at the long term as far as um, when I actually got to a certain point because I had certain goals that I wanted to achieve personally. And because once you catch a certain point, it's, it, it is what it is. So the only way you can do that is by your own internal aspects at that point. And so I said, well, you know, um, well, I'll take that stand. Well, you know the Army recruiters were like, yeah, whatever, it'll be easy. And it's like, no, uh, I, I'm not going to call myself that. And I can see reasons why. And a few of the guys were like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. And the Marines, the guy with the stuff like and they were right here for those who know what that means i don't know <laughs> i have no idea what those lines mean he just went and did the garage thing <laughs> you know that mm, i don't know about that <laughs> it's like yeah well i'm gonna i'm gonna take the stand i could see it and he was like yeah well you know you're still going in the army so you know it is However, I can see a reason why. And he's all, you know, the garage thing. Just, mm. <laughs> Just mm. <laughs> But you know, much more marine-y. <laughs> Just grr. Mm. <laughs> Compared to, you know, me doing that. And so he's all, you know, I don't know. Bob's right here. I don't know what they are. <laughs> and, you know, it was as it was. I think it was the it was the greens he was wearing. So those who know the Marines, you know, from there, so so kitty patitty Marines. <laughs> you know that stuff. Who I call kitty patitty Marines. It's the Johnny Joey Denver. It's the kitty patitty Marine. He had like five or so of these. <laughs> the little doohickey ma bobs. <laughs> You know, the, those doohickey, you know, <laughs> Marines. <laughs> you know what they're called, the little, the, the doohickey mabobs, you know. The diagonal red scuba line, but not. <laughs> but the doohickey mabobs, is it? I can make the joke, look at this stuff, isn't it? <laughs> and it is because it's an order and complete. You know, what, and then, you know, do he came about. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that is absolutely unhelpful <laughs> to anybody who doesn't know the Marine Corps stuff. That's fine. Yeah, so, <laughs> especially by name, because, you know, it's probably not called do he came about. That's probably, hypothetically, I could make that joke. Hypothetically, though, that is not called a doohickey mabob. That is probably not called a thingamajig. Probably. And I'm touching. <laughs> so I can make a joke in a different reference as far as the right to bear arms because of the doohickey mabobs regarding the Marine Corps guy. Uh-huh. Because that was on his arm. <laughs> By a technicality. <laughs> this was not. No. That's on his chest. That's his rack. But like, <laughs> the 
the two hickey-mabobs and thingamajigs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's so raw when you really think about like how not raw that is. <laughs> Especially when it comes to my scuba diving in comparison. Yeah, the thingamajigs with the two hickey-mabobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Though I can make a joke about my hair color. <laughs> What's that background, Maureen? state's kind of a blue state on top of that. And then there's the water. Yeah. And then there's Blue Origin. Hi, Rumi.
she was doing this in my living room. Okay, so my fireplace was over here, my TV was right here, and there's my L-shaped couch and stuff, and then my kitchen. And so she's in front of the couch here, and she's all like, whatever, I don't know, whatever music video or something during 2003, whatever it was, and I was like, I'm gonna go outside and have a cigarette because I don't want to deal with this. And so I took James and Lydia outside to the play area because I had my swing set, put, or I put a swing set up for them, and my children went and started playing, and all right, I'll read a book and take care of this, and whatever. Patricia, my biological sister, comes out and she's like, what do you mean? It's all over dramatic. I'm sure there are plenty of people who know exactly how this goes. She's all, what do you mean that I couldn't fiance Beyonce? <laughs> well, I doubt that if you were to meet Beyonce in person, face to face in person, you could even look at her. Although probably the exact same. Probably. <laughs> probably. And she was like, I could too. I could do this. I could do it. I doubt it. I don't know why. And granted, I didn't actually, to be honest, excuse me, Beyonce. You know, if there's the by chance of you, whatever. And Jay-Z as well, because apparently New York City and stuff. But nonetheless, and Texas, which is an irony. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what you physically look at. Actually, kind of registers. 
others in, in that way. So even in the political aspects regarding elected officials with the videos and stuff like that, only more recently have I actually looked. Usually, and I, and I don't know what people did regarding the newspaper back in the 80s and 90s. I just read the article. The pictures, I didn't ever pay attention to. I didn't ever look at the pictures. It just didn't seem important to pay attention to the pictures. And I didn't, and I don't know why. I mean, maybe it was because I was a child and, you know, I don't know, but I don't, I don't know what normalcy was back then for people. However, I paid more attention to the actual articles. I read the actual words, obviously. So I don't know what other people did during those time frames. I know during the Sunday paper, okay, yeah, I did look at the comic section. And that was the only time I ever actually looked at pictures. I didn't ever look at pictures beforehand. So I don't know what other people did during then or even now as far as that's concerned. I don't know if that's something additionally to take in consideration. Because only recently have I actually seen what certain people look at because of the time frame. So, um, so there's the 2020 election cycle, and that was the first time I'd ever seen some people, not just not just in reference to people, more along the lines of certain specific individuals in the knowledge of. So there is the fact that I have. Uh, published the letter from Senator Cornyn and, and 43 regarding the situations at the time in part as a thank you because I didn't know whether or not my email had gone through um, because it was right before um, I had to take a laptop in to do the book. So I don't know. <laughs> and it was also after the laptop fire. So that's the that's kind of the reason in regards to one particular where it's like because I've had issues with technology and I know of the roundabout time frame, let me make sure that the thank you email that I did send in those references, well, it was after the laptop fire regarding what, and it was before I had to take the first laptop in to the <laughs> Geek Squad guy at the best time. Very minimum, here's one way to actually say I appreciate whatever as far as those assistances at that point in time. And so as far as getting the memorial taken care of, as far as uh, that and whatever. So yeah, it was one of those, um, I didn't know, and that was, that was my attempt, but you know, the likelihood of knowing me, I'm just me in comparison to party rally and then it was really loud as well <laughs> and I didn't know that that's what it was and so you know <laughs> yeah, that, there was literally one and that was it it was like I can't handle that I deal with too much pain to deal with that so yeah I'm gonna <laughs> that was that was that point that was, that was one time it was it off of George Bush tollway if I remember correctly and so there was that so um, then, um, which is an irony, however. And so, um, yeah, yeah, and that was just before Senator, as I call it, Senator Teddy Bear. Um, I thought Senator Ted Cruz. Had <laughs> <laughs> done the stuff as far as that's concerned. And then, um, yeah, yeah, so other than that, really didn't get into the political thing. If, if somebody spoke with me about stuff, it was one of those, oh, this is what's going to be, and blah, 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 blah. Here, you need to pay attention to this, A, B, C, D, F, G, this is whatever. And so similarly, in regards to 2008, it's like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. He's going to become president of the United States of America, absolutely. Uh -huh. But I mean, even in reference to 2020, I called it. And I had 
and I did actually, now that I think about it, where I was like, you need to be truthful because election integrity stuff, and I know they're allowing certain things, and I didn't know about the merger at that time in the official capacities, if I remember correctly, so that's an irony. I called that when it came to 45 in the cycle at that point, because it was like, yeah, he has the votes, but um, they've been publicly saying this stuff, and so I think we have to, as a general public, pay attention to some of this stuff, but I don't know what's going on here, but I do know that some of the general public kind of might want to pay attention to certain things, and so here I'm going to give you these points as far as what I'm noticing, because I don't know what's going on with you guys, so I've noticed a few things, and so that's kind of an irony when you take that in consideration. And uh, with the ultimate in software, which then if you take into consideration not just the semi-truck Old Dominion company, um, but if you take in consideration Old Dominion software, that would be an irony in regards of semi-truck driver um, communication as far as transmissions and those particulars of, because that would be an older uh, reporting in reference to the technology merging aspect as a starting point. Uh, but then you also additionally have, as far as the Medal of Honor Art Project trip stuff, and those factors, as well as the I-35 southbound situation, and then um, and then radio comms being the first um, official recording on a continuous basis if you really think about it. So I don't know if there's any pop culture references to the knowledge of that that other people would be capable. I don't know, like maybe there's a song or maybe there's a show. I don't know um, because I'm really going to get into that. Uh, so then um, that's something to take in consideration regarding the merger stuff. And then if you additionally take in consideration what is it? Uh, something about the Georgia Guidestones, the R.C. Christensen or something? I mean, that's kind of an irony regarding um, R.C., so radio control or radio communication. That'd be an irony of radio communication in that reference. Because I know that um, I had talked with some people when I was volunteering at Sapphire, and I had said it was really weird because I went through certain areas, I can't remember where I was, and there was absolutely no radio. And, I mean, nothing, not even a Christian channel. Nothing. And one of the guys that was volunteering with me at the time, he became an employee later, he had said, what do you mean? And I said, you know, Alan, I'm just saying, like, there was absolutely nothing. There was no, um, like, it, it just kept cycling through on the AM station. I haven't ever been in an area, and I've driven, and, and there's so an irony of a Joe Rogan experience uh, YouTube uh, official video that I'm in the middle of listening to. This is actually what sparks this part as far as the overall and the combination of this. There's a multitude of, uh, I think it's Timothy Poole, I think is what, who Joe Rogan is uh, um, interviewing, and um, there was absolutely no, there wasn't, one, there wasn't anything, and I know that it was in a few areas um, that it happened, so I think the first time I recognized it occurring, I had noticed it before, but it wasn't that much as in, I think it was, um, might have been 2016 the first time it got really in that capacity, and then 2017, I know that was prevalent. There is the irony, though, as to the solar eclipse in 2017, so I don't know if from the prior time, I don't know if anybody's ever thought about calibrating that. That might be something E equals MC square would be capable to go calibrate. I don't know, same thing with uh, Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin and NASA. I don't know if anybody's really thought about that. I know that it, it was something that I paid attention to, though obviously with the R.C. Christensen, it, however, in reference to the Georgia Guidestones, that might be something to take in consideration as well. Because I don't know what 
the official official on that is. However, Timothy Pool said in the um, official Joe Rogan um, YouTube channel interview, and I haven't gotten far in there, I'll acknowledge that, it said he had driven across the country a whole bunch of times. And so I had in, I think it was 2016, which is before the 2017 solar eclipse, uh, I wonder if there's been something that's been noticed with radio communications within a one year, maybe one and a half year time frame before a solar eclipse in whichever country to take that in consideration. So I know 1994, there was the solar eclipse it, and, and it spanned all the way up to New Jersey, and it was in the reverse. I do remember that. It's in the reverse as to how um, it was shown. Or I think so. Yeah, it was the reverse. And so in 2017, the solar eclipse, you would be capable to see it from, so at the angle portion in Oregon, and then down to. Florida, as far as if I remember correctly. Well, in 1994, the solar eclipse was the opposite. It was the base of California all the way up to Maine, as far as that was calculated at that time for that particular alignment. So I don't know if anybody else has ever taken that in consideration or if that has something to do with the Georgia Guidestones. Um, but that's something because I know when I went out to Nebraska, um, there was a, um, so I was staying in Colorado during my Medal of Honor art project trip. I actually wrote about this in the Modern Day Book and on my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmealing.com. So as I was driving, I left early because I wanted to go and take care of my Medal of Honor art project stuff at the same time. But also, um, just kind of look around a little bit. And I remember when I left Colorado, or when I was driving through Colorado, I should say, there were a whole bunch of fireflies. It was really weird because it was, I mean, the fields were just a whole bunch of fireflies. So um, it was something like, I think I left around 2.30 or 3.30 and I grew up in New Jersey seeing fireflies at night, and usually they would come out around twilight. And then you wouldn't really see them very often, except for maybe here and there, up until about 10, 10.30 at night, so that would be 2200 or 2230, those would have been military time, on the East Coast. In Illinois, I hadn't ever seen a firefly. There wasn't one that I'd ever seen, which was weird to me. And so when in Colorado, going out to Nebraska, I was confused, because it's like, wait a minute, in Illinois, they didn't have any fireflies. So, uh, and Nebraska's not really, I mean, it's further than Illinois, but it's not that far by distance so it, really, it, 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 it was as it was. And so in Colorado, and I was staying in Rush or Morgan area of Colorado, for those who know, um, driving from Colorado to Nebraska, uh, was it, I think it was Alliance, if I remember, or something, I saw, or Fairview, I think it was Fairview, and I had seen just fields. And it was weird because when I was driving, this is what was more weird, when I was driving on the highway, there weren't any fireflies I was that got smushed by my windshield. They were in the fields, thousands of them, but on the highway, nothing. Not one little firefly. It was the weirdest thing. It's like, huh. too much, but it's just, huh, that's weird, okay, and then when in Nebraska, out of nowhere, I mean literally out of nowhere, you know, the, the, the headlights were on, and you know, you have the line of sight, 
nowhere. Literally, there was a wall of fog. Like, you know, most people who know about fog, it rolls in. You see traces of it somehow, somewhere. No, nope. boom, wall of fog. And I was like, okay, that's no. And I asked, and, and that year, and specifically that year, that was the rain situation when going from Utah to back to Colorado. So I was on the mountain and um, it started raining out of nowhere. I mean, I already had tall rain. I had tall rain. So I got to get one of my mellow monitors and um, <laughs> went to take care of that. It started drizzling. I looked up at the cloud and I was like, you are gonna hold that until I am done. <laughs> I'm gonna take care of my work. And so, <laughs> it was funny, I told Alan about this, I was joking about it, so it stopped drizzling, I'm like, that's right, I'm like, take care of my work. <laughs> Who do you think you are, clouds? I'm going to paper. I'm getting my paper. <laughs> In my thoughts, I can make fun of this now in 2022 compared to 2017. Oh, and this is actually how it went. So I got this huge monument in front. I'm doing my Mel Byer project stuff. It's like, mm -hmm, yeah, that's right, clouds. So I, I mean, I did stop for a little bit. I, I said no dribbling. Lit. Like everything is lit. 
and you got everybody smoking the hookah, and you know, you got the multi whatever, as far as that's concerned, and those who have been to a hookah bar, you know what I'm talking about, and then, you know, you even got the pipe smokers and the cigarette smokers in that particular, because this is before e-cigarettes, as far as when I went, and so that was nothing. Nothing compared to the wall of cloud that it was like I thought I was a, this I, to myself I thought this must be what it's like being a pilot and then all of a sudden like where do I go I mean the benefit at minimum when being in a cloud most likely and flying a plane if there's not other people on the road <laughs> comparison because out of nowhere some of the, I don't even know where any of these vehicles came from so either. They had been in the cloud and, and were just kind of sitting around. I don't know. Or I don't think the cloud brought them in, but it was as it was. It was just weird because it's like, what is going on? And so I had to go around these people. The GPS, ironically, was working fine. That was an irony I noticed where it's like, wait, why are you so, so you go in internal thoughts, so you go and have issues. Breath, but now you're just going to be working fine. That's fine. Okay, it's weird. And so there were, it was an odd point in time just before and during the solar eclipse. There was a few situations in that reference. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was as it was, but that's definitely something to take in consideration. But yeah, so as far as my Mount Meyer project trip, so I didn't ever talk about where I was specifically going, except the one time of the solar eclipse. That's the only one that I discussed. Not having invited officially, but you know, did do that. And so I went on my own merry little way. I do have to say though, there were some people in there. And then there was this really weird situation. <laughs> Like, it was really weird. So there were these people, and they were along this fence line area, and there's this cornfield. And as the solar eclipse is going on, I see these spirits. Uh, 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 and they were weird looking. I, I've seen spirits before. <laughs> they were weird. I mean, they were these, like, young, I don't know if they were children or whatever, but they were coming out with porn, and I'm like, no, no. So it's an internal thought, but these I don't knows were in the corn, and, and I don't want to say they were children, but they were like in the cornfield, and especially after seeing these fireflies, I was like, uh, excuse me, no, that's not okay. And so it was weird. It was weird because they went to go and like, and, uh, 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 uh. and so um, because I've grown up with certain things and seeing certain things, so literally these little and they and they were like blonde sort of children ish. I don't know if they were teenagers or whatever. It was weird. Um, <laughs> these spirits go to and. and look over because again I born and raised in New Jersey grew up going to Old Tenant Presbyterian Church and so I'm accustomed to seeing certain things and handling certain things it's like and I said no and literally so the hand the, I don't want to say children but whatever they're literally reaching I say no to these whatever people and they go like that and it was But it was one of those, I already let the clouds come. Don't make me. No, don't. I, I don't want to have to deal with you. I don't, I, don't make me. Don't make me. This is, this is not a funny game. It's not funny at all. I do not find any humor in this at all. Whatsoever. And so instead of staying for the entire solar eclipse, because I wanted to, 
after a few other situations, it was one of those, I have stuff to go take care of now. Great. Awesome. Because those who understand certain um, spiritual stuff, um, just had to go take care of certain things so that way it wasn't a problem. I don't really have the words for it, other than just, you know, not having a problem with that, because I, I don't even know. I, I, I had no way to describe that, other than they were, they were weird. And, I, and I'm not talking about the people that were there, I'm talking about the spirits that I was seeing. And it's one of those, that's a, that's a little... I mean, and then, you know, taking consideration for fun, I'm doing my Medal of Honor art project, and I am like, huh, I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> I'm gonna go land at the bottom of the ocean and do my stuff, that is creepy. <laughs> taking consideration that dichotomy when you really think about it. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine, I take a picture of a forming underwater volcano, whatever. That's, that's scary to me. I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> For fun, I'm gonna go and do my Medal of Honor art project with historical and spiritual rubbing. That's creepy over there, I'm gonna go over here. I don't like that, that's, that's not okay. That, whatever. Those little trans, I don't, I, I mean, they're like, uh, and because you could see, uh, if you could see, in comparison to what I'm accustomed to in reference to spirits, I haven't ever seen anything like that before. There's not one spirit I have ever seen in that capacity of. I have dealt with situations as far as all sorts of whatever, and it's like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, I've dealt with Indiana in 1999 and Irving in 2011. I'm going to go over here. That freaks me out. That's creepy. That's creepy. That, that I will acknowledge that is creepy. And so, <laughs> which take that in consideration, and it's like, yeah, I don't know. So those lands, I don't know what's in those lands um, as far as that cornfield or whatever. But that was as it was. I, I don't even know how to put that other than that. Haven't seen it since. Don't. Yeah, that was that was that was weird. Although there is an irony in reference to when I was at Clear Springs Scuba Park, there was a female who kind of looked similar-ish to one of those. And I was like, huh? Yeah. Oh, I already know how to deal with your type. That's a, that's easy. <laughs> that is simple. <laughs> I know how to deal with your type, purple bottle girl. Don't worry. I mean, unless you really should. That's different. And so, you know, it is as it is. You get it, whenever, whatever. It's funny, she looks like uh, Joseph Estes' uh, eldest daughter if she had grown up. And it's like, huh, aw, I'm stronger. So have fun with that. Merry Christmas. In that hypothetical, a hypothetical depending on your viewpoint. So there is the modern day book. And so, you know, that is as it is. That's why you're supposed to get my permission. That's why you don't ever do certain things. You have to get permission. Yeah, yeah, it's important. Um, I'm kind of, what's mine is mine is mine is mine. And so, you know, um, didn't give anybody any permission to get involved with a 
if I'm accurate at all, in any capacity. And only if there are no Kuwait meetings other than that stuff that's ever been proven well, then there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to fear. Except for yourself. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, that is what it is. I know some people have had their opinions regarding certain things, but if in any capacity, as you could, those who would know, just as that stiff would be in regards to the Taco Cabana problem, and Joseph, Joseph Estes would be in reference to the whiny temper tantrum as far as posting a picture on FetLife, but was okay with it on Facebook, which if you think about common sense, um, there's more people on Facebook than on FetLife. <laughs> if you're that embarrassed or whatever, but okay. And then there is the fact of, you know, where I had my laptop, which was on the back patio on a townhouse first floor patio. I mean, I did have bamboo blinds, but still, it's the back, back, the first floor patio. And so, situations, Alicia's, Scordia, those needless problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, then there's Alicia and Discordia who had gone to DFW, or I think it was Discordia or Erica, her name, and went to DFW and she went and I had received a notification after <laughs> a lot of stuff had occurred, you know, like my scuba diving and Irving by that point in time. Mm -hmm. And then the situation with the fire regarding Patrick. And, um, yeah, 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 so, you know. Then there's the irony as far as Austin in 2020, and if you read about that and knew about that, well, sure, I'm Second Amendment friendly, I am, in truth. So, you know, there's the irony. Yeah, you have the right to freedom of expression, but there is the fact, and here's the thing about technology, which people have to take in consideration. So, thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That is actual legal laws. So, if you're going to post something online, you legally have to tell the truth. You can do it in your freedom of expression way, but you are not allowed to slander because that is a legal law. That's not a freedom of expression. That is a legality on a social media platform. That's the truth. There, yes, you have freedom of speech and freedom of the press, except you have to tell the truth because if you make a threat, if you lie, if you bear false witness, if you do any of these things, there are those realities that that's not covered under freedom of speech. So you can actually be sued for slander. You can actually be sued for harassment. You actually can be sued for liable. So if you have done anything in, for example, Leatherati, and what I dealt with, legally, each and every person as far as that particular aspect in the state of Texas and et cetera, et cetera, legally, that's a thing. I mean, it, it was always a point in time that, you know, okay, E equals MC squared. He bought Twitter and opened everything up. Awesome. But that is a fact that slander is considered illegal across the United States of America. You cannot slander someone. You have to tell the truth. So if you give in, so in, if you go and tell people a lie, it is illegal. It is not something in the constitutional rights. It is a prosecutorial offense. There are civil aspects to those references. So in reference to such as finding the silver lining, well, in regards of people who have had, it's not in any other context than the truth. It's not in a 
vicious capacity after what I had been informed of that would be considered as complementary, then there's that capacity that you can't do that. Additionally, it is in regards of satire because of the requirement, especially because it goes along with finding a silver lining. And so that's more of possibly people's thought processes regarding some of the stuff and finding a silver lining. Aside from whatever commonality regarding finding the silver lining. And there are some happier aspects, though it is the reality. And so there is not any slander because there's no specifics as far as names. Now, I have done some updating in the year 2019 and 2020 and 2021 and 2022 which is different than in the year it was first published in 2014. So there are those factors from 2014 through 2019, or technically 2022, when E equals MC squared opened everything up. Because if there has been the situation such as what I dealt with in the state of Texas, though also Washington State, let's say, let's say there was the knowledge of. Well, you don't have that right. So people who went to Sapphire, if you slandered and you impeded on their business, again, in the initial updating regarding my journal blog, which my journal blog is a journal blog, I don't receive advertisement fees. I don't get that. So it is a journal blog. There is no advertisements. So like Fox News Network, CNN, they receive revenue for those aspects. As far as my journal blog, that's my journal blog. I don't get paid for that. That's just my stuff. My books for my profit, not for other people. That's by my standards of what I choose. I had this whole kit and caboodle as far as how I wanted it done, and only for certain books, not all of them. There are plenty of my books that I authored and compiled where none of them have any donations, the majority of them actually. There's only one, two, three, four, seven. If I remember correctly, there are only seven books that have donation aspect percentages. Every other book I offer does not have that. So there's not the same capacity of. That's why I did not ask anybody for their assistance regarding my work. Because why would you think that you would know what I was planning if you didn't ask me? This is why I did not invite people I once knew, especially after how I wound up in Washington State. There's not one person I would ever trust that I once knew in person, face to face in person, regarding my business and my work at all. Not one acquaintance, not one friend, not one family. Dating, maybe, but only in a discussion in person, face to face in person with audible words, and that's it. No one has ever had my permission to involve themselves in any capacity because I knew what I was doing. Since I was not dating anybody that I was in that capacity of, there wasn't any in that capacity of that I would ever allow. That's why I did things my way because I knew I wanted it done my way. So in that reference, if somebody lied to anybody, so let's say somebody lied to Jeff Bezos, well, that's lying to Jeff Bezos. So let's say somebody I had done modeling pictures with lied to Jeff Bezos or Amazon. I was like, look, whatever, and they didn't tell the truth or the viewpoint of social media or whatever, well, that's, that's on them as far as what they caused Jeff Bezos and Amazon 
that's the type of problem in regards of those types of people that would ever think that they would ever have that. I didn't ever give a green light to them. I wouldn't. So, for example, there's no one in the what is supposed to be considered the adult consenting lifestyle. There is no one that I knew that I would ever give that green light to. Ever. Not one. Not at all. While they might think what they might think, there is not one person that I would do that with. No matter how much they might convince somebody or wish to, but there is that false representation bearing false witness. There is that capacity of that. Which if you lied, then you have to deal with that in those references. Same thing in regards of my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, and or ex-in-laws. Additionally, fact, all you have to do is look at cell phone records. Who did I speak with on a continuous basis from the time frame of the year 2015 when I arranged my website? If there is no one from the state of Texas that, because that's the only way I would have discussed it, and so if from the time frame of 2014 and 2015, and I wasn't discussing stuff most specifically, sure, I brought up something about a picture. That doesn't mean anything else. That doesn't mean any involvement regarding any photographer. In that regard, and that has absolutely nothing to do with my Medal of Honor art project. And so that false representation regarding that, that would be something else in those capacities in reference to. Because I wouldn't ever allow that. At all. Whatsoever. It's personal preference. It's my right to choose. Because I am the one who's in charge of my work. I didn't give permission because it's my right to choose. And as far as that female or whatever person regarding well, it's my right to choose because of my daughter, my son, and I. So the right of mine, because of knowing that type, I wasn't willing to be a part of certain things because I picked up on a few things. And so my right to do so is my right to do so. Especially if there's any proof in addition to any connection at all. And since how I wound up in Washington State was known specifically, and there was a, the assistance in the correct capacities, there's no need for those types of people to be involved with stuff that they already caused needless problems to. That's a false representation regarding, obviously. And so the irony of the 2020 election. So if individuals decided that, oh, well, I saw this movie, and this did this, and this did that, I'm not looking into that. It's not something I would agree to. Especially my Medal of Honor art project. There's no respect from those people if there were needless problems caused. While some people might think otherwise, you 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 did not respect it. It's not for a general public. The completed pieces, that's one thing. Not my Medal of Honor art project trips. That requires certain things, such as etiquette and respect. And while you might think you know what etiquette and respect would be, well, if you didn't discuss it with me, then you missed the first step. 
you might have respect for the guy who earned whatever, but then you not having etiquette and respect to speak with me, what does that show in comparison? Because that's the point. Is if you actually respected the Medal of Honor guy, the spirit of the Medal of Honor award, you would have done things as it's known in military protocol. You ask the one and only. Same thing in regards to my scuba diving. This is why I only asked about one was not an open casting call, because even in that specific of, you had to contact me through that account. That was a specific at that time, obviously. Though, afterwards, there is the fact that it was as it was, I've already clarified that, situations up. I've already written and clarified as best as I could. So where I've been accurate and to the level of as much as I've already dealt with. So all of those people who decided to involve themselves without ever actually speaking with me. I suppose that is bratty masochism by BDSM, supposed to be consenting adult style lifestyle definition. Because that's what that definition would be, is a bratty masochist. Because someone who is a submissive, or a dominant, or a switch, would have the common courtesy and etiquette to speak with the one and only. Would follow protocol. You shouldn't even have to have the definitive portions as to me being in leather. However, um, that is the fact of that I'm leather. I'm not a, um, not a fly-by-night type as far as the pick-up play type. I'm not one of those. Um, I'm not a pro, that's obvious, um, so I don't go in that route, um, so I'm leather, huge difference between the fly-by-night types, the in-and-out types, the pro types, and, um, and sure, they can be intermingled and whatever, however, I'm not one of those types. So I'm leather. So I explained, especially in Sapphire, when I was volunteering, I said I'm more BDSM than I am swinger, because that's more of a, a quick way to explain. If you want to actually discuss, then we can actually discuss. But if we don't discuss because of getting stuff ready, I understand. So I'm high protocol leather. High protocol. So there's leather, as far as an overall. There's MS leather. So those are interchangeable, depending on what your knowledge is. And then there's high protocol. And then there's high protocol leather. And so high protocol leather is extremely different than any other type. So high protocol leather is not an in and out type, or a fly-by-night type, or a switch type, or anything other than. So definitely not a pro type at all, whatsoever. High protocol leather, 
who are in high protocol leather, but those who know high protocol leather know for a fact, nine times out of ten, a high protocol leather is usually a male from the old guard. There were very few high protocol leather females from the old guard. Very few. Especially in regards to the 1980s and 1990s. So, I am high protocol leather. I've explained that before. You can see it in additional references. I earned 26 scuba diving certifications in less than a 12 month cycle. Less than a 10 month cycle, to be honest. Um, and then when I graduated from the Dominant Mentor Program where I began in Austin and graduated in the DFW area, I completed my homework each week within the first 48 hours of it being assigned nine times out of 10. My number of electives um, I completed within the minimum standards I completed within the first two months after boot camp. Completed all of that. My volunteer minimum requirement I completed in that same time frame. So by the time of uh, five months, I technically could have graduated the dominant mentor program in Austin by the amount of work requirements. So, high protocol leather. Just for that clarification. This is why I don't play with brats. But I don't do that. So when it comes to my work and my business, high protocol and somebody else choosing to involve themselves, that's not asked for. Wasn't ever. That's not a surprise that would ever be looked at by a high protocol leather individual from anybody in the supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle in a positive manner. That would be, uh, well, you've been capable to read the updates regards to the journal blog. And I'm fairly certain that it could be considered as calm when you really think about those hypotheticals. So I'm I'm elated that Elon Musk or E. Gable says he is there. Hopefully that's a uh, fully full green light in regards to freedom of speech, especially after if there's any aspect of individuals involving themselves. Like, for example, let's say people decided to show up to Sapphire and try to speak on behalf of me to Ruby or Doug or Ray because I wouldn't ever allow that. If I wanted, see this is something that East Coast Leather and West Coast have an issue with. So back in the day, West Coast Leather thought that you could just name drop and East Coast Leather had an issue with 
name dropping because East Coast Leather wanted a vet process. They, they argued with West Coast Leather because West Coast Leather thought it wasn't that big of a deal regarding a vetting process. East Coast Leather being high protocol English type of leather mixed with the military had a reason for that. West Coast Leather said, no, no, we prefer the anarchy, we prefer this, we prefer that. And the East Coast Leather said, no, we're not interested in that. If you want to do that, that's your choice. Do not interfere with our work, our stuff, our whatever. Because if you're not willing to vet yourself, then we don't want to have anything to do with you. Because if you can't be vetted by a multitude of factors, so first, your etiquette is a mandatory. Name dropping in the East Coast, as far as leather, that was not ever looked highly upon. Anybody who tried name dropping in that capacity of going to events at an East Coast club, I know there are those who know how that goes. You know, it's the equivalent of, yo, I know someone who's on the list. And the bouncer's like, are you on the list? And yeah, you know, I know so-and-so, and you know, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. Well then, go get them. Have them come speak with us. And then we might let you in. But if you know so and so, then you better actually have that with you when trying to get into this club. If they don't do so, it's going to be an issue. Those who know how East Coast uh, clubs went back in the 1980s and 1990s, you don't even have to be in the supposed to be Kentucky adult lifestyle scene. You know how that went. People that did that, you didn't ever do that. There were always problems with that. That was part of the East Coast, West Coast issues. And so where the West Coast wanted to just, oh, it's no big deal, you know, whatever. East Coast was, no. And so West Coast was like, well, we're a Democrat, whatever, too. And East Coast was like, yeah, no, we're not the same type. Don't compare yourself to us. And so West Coast, whatever, was like, well, we got Hollywood. And East Coast was like, that's nice. We have the entire East Coast, and everything's a conglomerate of, and so we're not willing to be a glossy daisy because we have to protect each of these areas. So where you have one state, we have all of these different intricacies where we actually pay attention to them, and they make their own choices and their own decisions. However, we have our process to keep them safe as best as possible, but they still make their own choices. We don't overbearingly do anything the way you want to do it. So no, this, the, they choose how they choose, and we just provide a safe environment. Your type is not akin to this. And so that was a thing between the East and West Coast because the West Coast wanted it to just be, well, it's like a free-for-all. And the East Coast was like, no. Even in New York City, you got five boroughs. It's not the same. So in a smaller area than the entire state of New York, you got all five boroughs, and you had the West Coast that was like, be cool, man. It's all good. It's okay. And the East Coast was like, but it's not. And so, oh, why do you got to be so uptight? Because 
of your types, you don't pay attention to quite a few details. And so there was a huge, I'm sure there are those who know about the East Coast, West Coast rivalries in regards of, well, that was huge in New York City, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and New Jersey. That was a massively huge issue. The entire state of California, in certain references, but each and every one of them, and it was, there were those from the West Coast and the East Coast who did, you know, meet in the middle and things worked out, because they found out who the ones were that were stirring up stuff from the West Coast. And it was, the East Coast wasn't doing anything, not bringing in Washington State or Oregon, it was really just California. However, those situations were a bunch of needless problems because they wanted to do their Hollywood stuff, and the East Coast was like, no. That's cool, you got that there, that's not here. This is not, this is not whatever, and so they tried the, well, we have, no, you don't. No, 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 no. So there was a lot of issues in those times, and so Washington State and Oregon, I'm sure, are kind of, they probably are more along the lines of the coast-ish way, but because they're on the west coast, they, you know, it's kind of the equivalent of, we're not all the Seattle, <laughs> there's, there's other parts of us, like, Spokane, and Valhalla, and Yakima, <laughs> don't blame the rest of us for that, in California, for Seattle, in that regard, I, I'm sure, you know, we're not all Portland, <laughs> We're not. <laughs> There's other areas of Oregon, you know that. <laughs> we do, we have other areas. <laughs> In comparison to, you know. And so, you know, the irony as far as the land situation. So, you know. Mm hmm. That was my Battle of Honor Art Project. You'd think that after a documentary I saw, You'd think they would have learned from that, you know? I mean, the first movie I saw when I was over the age of 18, you'd think it comes to my Medal of Honor and Art Project and my Medal of Honor Art Project trips. I don't know how many other examples Hollywood has for that sort of situation. They should probably think about that because then you know, maybe it's about time you learn. Because <laughs> I don't know how many how many movies in those references as to The Exorcist have that type of a documentary that can go along with. That would be a pattern of behavior that maybe Hollywood should think about in those references. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. If there's any correlation more than just that, I don't know what movies there'd be. I didn't really get into pop culture. So maybe, I mean, there is that genre. Maybe they should think about that. I mean, you know, depends on. <laughs> so what an irony. I mean, I, I've done what I could as best as I could, so I know I'm safe. And I don't know about anybody else, whether they could say they succeeded or if they need to acknowledge a failure. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that would go to remorse that would get. So anyway, you guys have a good day. Make sure you go to my website, newing.com. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel. Like all of my official YouTube videos for my official YouTube channel. And if you have a comment, please do have etiquette and respect. Yeah, freedom of expression within the confines of the law.
so you can make a joke. You can still do comedy. That's not denying it. You got to just remember there's truth behind every joke. But experience. Sarah, laughter is the best medicine. I can make fun of myself. People said that it was self deprecating by their opinion, and I told them, I don't think so. You guys have a good one.